volunteers in all 50 states have asked me to run as a candidate for President of the United States. Jim Stockdale, our vice presidential candidate, and I are honored to accept their request. Those words ended weeks of anticipation for these Perot supporters. These people have stayed together under the name of United We Stand America, their mission to hold candidates accountable for their actions and to influence policy. But it's been clear all along they wanted their leader to throw his hat back into the presidential ring. We're just thrilled that uh, Mr. Perot has decided to, to answer the, the call of millions of Americans and, and get in the race in a, in a complete way. Neither political party has effectively addressed the issues that concern the American people. They've asked me to run this campaign on the issues and to assure that the problems that the American people are concerned with will be dealt with after this election is over. I think whenever they see his uh, campaigning uh, compared to uh, Bush's and Clinton's, that they're going to see uh, that he's still the, the right person. Perot says he's not getting back into the race just to help one of the other candidates. He plans to win. His volunteers know they have a month of hard work ahead of them. Can he win? Yes, he can. Our polls that we have taken here in Fort Smith show him to be a uh, running in the front, not in the back. And we think that this will uh, show all over the country that he will be a winner. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I have every bit of confidence or we wouldn't be working this hard. In Fort Smith, I'm Guy Westmoland, TV5 First Team. The candidates were allowed to get up and move around. They were not allowed to give opening statements. Instead, they answered questions from a single moderator and an audience made up of 209 uncommitted voters. It didn't take long for President Bush and Governor Clinton to begin their attacks on each other. I am deeply troubled by someone who demonstrates and organizes demonstration in a foreign land when his country's at war. But the big argument I have with the governor on this is this taking different positions on different issues, trying to be one thing to one person here that's opposing the NAFTA agreement and then for it, what we call waffling. The Washington Post ran a long editorial today saying they couldn't believe Mr. Bush was making character an issue and they said he was the greatest, quote, political chameleon for changing his positions of all time. Now, Please I don't, don't want to get into that. Wait a Washington Post. Let's, I just find it fascinating that while we sit here tonight, we were going to debt an additional $50, billion, $50 million in an hour and a half. Now, it's not the Republicans' fault, of course, and it's not the Democrats' fault, and what I'm looking for is who did it. Now, they're the two folks involved, so maybe if you put them together, they did it. I'm Guy Westmolin for your TV5 Morning News. It tells me. There are those who are saying President Bush and Ross Perot lost the second debate because they didn't personalize their answers the way Governor Clinton did. I have seen what's happened in this last four years when, in my state, when people lose their jobs, there's a good chance I'll know them by their names. You know, I've interviewed Governor Clinton three or four times, but I don't really know the man all that well on a personal basis. So I thought, well, I'll get to know him a little bit better if I can meet some of his friends. And after what he said at the debate, this seemed like a good place to find him. Have you heard from Governor Clinton yet? Uh, no, sir, I sure haven't. Aren't you guys friends? Uh, not that I know of. Are we supposed to hear from him when we're unemployed? Well, he acts like he's personal friends with most people who are unemployed in Arkansas. He's not a friend of mine. Does he ever call you up or invite you over or anything? No. Maybe for, you know, like a game of uh, Trivial Pursuit or something? <laughs> no. Really? Does the governor ever invite you over to, you know, drink a beer or a cup of coffee or anything? No. You guys aren't that close? No. He didn't call you after you lost your job? No. You're kidding. No, I'm not. I know who he is, but I don't know him personally. Did he call you up and wish give you his condolences after you lost your job? No, he didn't. That's hard to believe. Yeah. You must be the only one that he didn't call. I guess so. I don't know the man. <laughs> you don't know him? No. You must be the only one. Maybe. Maybe Clinton meant he has unemployed friends in Little Rock. In Fort Smith, I'm Guy Westmoland for CBS. With the election only two weeks away, it didn't take long for the president to attack Clinton's record at home. He talks about all the jobs he's created in one or two years. 
over the last 10 years since he's been governor, there's 30 percent behind. 30 percent, they're 30 percent of the national average. On pay for teachers, on all these categories, Arkansas is right near the very bottom. We're low spending, low tax burden, we dramatically increased investment, and our jobs are growing. I think probably we're making a mistake night after night after night to cast the nation's future on a unit that small. Why is that a mistake? It's irrelevant. What hit? <laughs> you c I could say, you know, that I ran a small grocery store on the corner, therefore I extrapolate that into the fact that I could run Walmart. That's not true. <laughs> The president wasn't attacking Clinton's record in Arkansas. He was all but calling him a tax and spend Democrat. When you hear tax the rich, Mr. and Mrs. America, watch your wallet. Lock your wallet, because he's coming right after you, just like Jimmy Carter did. I'm Guy West Boland for your TV5 Morning News. In his first major public address since winning the election, President-elect Clinton pledged to reform the veterans' health care system. Mr. Clinton also promised to get a full accounting of American troops listed as missing in action. I will do my very best to make sure we have a final and full resolution of the POW-MIA issue. <laughs>